it's November, which means we need to make one of these topics or all of these topics uh, from nodes, only using nodes. Uh, so I made the paint. I wish I could do all of them, but good art takes time. So I'm just gonna do the paint uh, and maybe later I'll, I'll do another one, but we'll see. Um, so first off, I did uh, this in Substance uh, Designer and then uh, that in, in Houdini and uh, finally uh, this with uh, Niagara in, in Unreal Engine. Uh, first off, uh, let's, let's go over uh, Substance Designer and I'll make this brief. I don't want to go through each uh, node by itself. I'll just uh, explain uh, my process uh, on, a, on a high high level. So the way I work is I would make this brush generator and I would plug uh, I would plug grunges in it. Same here. And with with an easy splatter I would uh, layer the brushes in different ways on top of each other. You could use uh, splatter if you don't want to use easy splatter, but you could also get this uh, from Substance Share. So with that, I would layer and layer different grunges, uh, like brushes, w and finally uh, slope blur and slope blur again to get this uh, chunky feel. And uh, finally, the color uh, is just using different like ambient occlusion, curvature, and that kind of thing. Uh, so this this is not a base color. This is more like uh, just me trying to make uh, an image uh, look good. Th this is not a base color. Um, and for the brushes, that's the brush here. That's. Uh, another graph just for the brush. So all of this part right here is just me trying to make some grunges but in the end uh, you could use Cartesian to polar to get this uh, warpy look and this is this could be used as a brush stroke especially that top part right there uh, and if you use a transform this doesn't tile though we'll just use the center part uh, we we would use it as a like a background layer uh, or a gradient in the background. Um, this this brush has this more defined look to it, which uh, is also using some grunges. So you could get whatever grunge you want. But here's the good part: uh, with a non-directional, uh, non-uniform directional warp, you could uh, get this. With a with a gradient, and we just need the uh, to mask out the center part because we don't we don't need the other because this this side doesn't really tile that well so we just need the center and we'll we'll use this as a brush for other stuff right here so that's the brush with an easy splatter. It does this thing, and finally, when I when I get this, I would start changing some parameters and uh, save different images, so I would get this uh, uh, the, the the animated look uh, I have in the video. So, let's uh, move on to Houdini now. So for the Houdini part, I used uh, a flip sim right here with the uh, cops to change the uh, color of the points over time. So let's dive into the cops first and see how that's being done. Um, so I brought in the texture from uh, Substance Designer and with a VOP cop 2 generator uh, this, this is like a like the VOPs or the, the math based stuff uh, I changed the color over time 
with the noise, kernel noise, and finally the output. And I, I referenced this point, uh, this uh, node out cops, and here. This part right here. But I, I needed to add this dollar f in the end so that we'd have the time so it'll update over time okay so go back in here yeah so this is the simulation here without any any color but with the with here uh, in, in this uh, wrangle node we transfer the color just with a point um, and one the attribute cd based on the point number because the point number is not changing uh, on this side and that side so i can transfer the color later and i did it this way so that uh, i would have the cops on one side and the uh, flips them on the other side uh, so in, in case i put this f up here somewhere before the flips them i would Every time I change the uh, something in the uh, cops, I would have to resem this, which would take a long time, and I hate waiting for renders. That's why I'm working in game development. Um, so yeah, so this part on the left, uh, we could dive in. It's using a flip sim. I could link to uh, videos showing how this is done um, but mainly I use this here with a fit uh, based on the frame number uh, and uh, the intensity from 4 to 0 so as uh, time passes it'll slow down uh, the effect will slow down and the uh, movement this wavy movement is based on this these curves okay and finally uh, when we're done here, we use a Niagara ROP to export uh, the point cache to Houdini. And this, uh, there's a really good uh, a series of videos by uh, Mike Linden. I'll link that too in the description. Um, and let's go to Unreal now. Now that we're in Unreal, uh, we bring in the uh, point cache and plug that into uh, a Niagara system. Uh, let me just lower the point count so that uh, Unreal wouldn't die while I'm recording. Okay, this is easier to work with now. Um, so yeah, you plug it in here. A uh, few things you need to uh, take care of here. Uh, it's just turn it into a local space and determine it to determinism so that it wouldn't change uh, it, it'll just follow the uh, point cache but that shouldn't change any otherwise but just just uh, check that local space so that if you change it in here let's just drop out of that if you would move it in in here uh, it wouldn't be affected by the world it'll just be in its local space so check that too uh, one other thing uh, in the uh, particle update uh, kill particle when lifetime has elapsed uncheck that uh, because although it might look fine here it they might die in in the level I could show you an example so this is what happens if you don't do that. It'll look fine in here, but in the level would they would start dying. These are the point caches, and you bring in a mesh if you want to render uh, a mesh. That's the mesh. It's just a sphere, and that's uh, the uh, material, just a particle color into a massive. And make sure the uh, material is set to unlit. Unless you want to render, uh, you want to make it uh, interact with the light, which could be a good look. I didn't, I preferred unlit for this one. Uh, and one last thing, uh, you could add a color.
just add and type in color and you would get that but you plug the uh, from the particle attribute uh, we got from uh, Houdini uh, we'll use the uh, color there and uh, make sure it's a vector um, yeah and plug that in and the colors uh, would update this is the final output uh, so the project files should be in the description the Houdini and uh, substance designer files and I will see you in the next one